Introduction 495 is not waste equity, it's waste inequity. Rather than relieving burdens of environmental justice communities, it simply creates new environmental justice communities. Introduction 495 will arbitrarily spread harm to create new environmental justice communities and equally distribute waste, capping some communities but not others with hidden loopholes allowing an unlimited burden for districts with marine transfer stations and ignores real solutions of reductions and recycling. Distribution of waste by community district is arbitrary and capricious. The 59 community districts that make up the city are organized by neighborhood, irrespective of residents. Some simple math here. In order to achieve a waste cap of 5%, that would require spreading waste to a minimum of 20 community districts, yet few of the 59 community districts have zoning for manufacturing, meaning the placement of more than more transfer stations in 20 additional residential neighborhoods. According to testimony from the Department of Sanitation, if introduction 495 is passed, at least 13 council districts have existing transfer stations that can accept increased waste, including but not limited to. District 3, Corey Johnson, Manhattan. District 5, my district, Manhattan. District 6, Helen Rosenthal, Manhattan. District 19, Paul Vallone, Queens. District 21, Julissa Ferreris, Queens. District 26, Jimmy Van Bramer, Queens. District 30, Elizabeth Crowley, Queens. District 38, Carlos Menchaca, Brooklyn. District 42, Inez Barron, Brooklyn. District 43, Vincent Gentili, Brooklyn. District 45, Jamani Williams, Brooklyn. District 49, Debbie Rowe, Staten Island. District 50, Stephen Matteo, Staten Island. In addition to the Department of Sanitation has identified 12 council districts with manufacturing zoned areas, quote, most likely areas for transfer station development, end of quote, including but not limited to District 10, Adonis Rodriguez, Manhattan. District 12, Andy King, Bronx. District 13, Jimmy Vaca, Bronx. District 14, Fernando Cabrera, Bronx. District 18, Richie Torres, Bronx. District 20, Peter Koo, Queens. District 22, Costa Constantiniti, Queens. District 31, Donovan Richards, Queens. District 37, Rafael Espinal, Brooklyn. District 46, Alan Maisel, Brooklyn. District 47, Mark Traeger, Brooklyn. District 51, Vinny Ignizio, Staten Island. Were these members and members of their 25 council districts properly advised and notified of what Introduction 495 has in store for them? They would be here. So while so many speak of a tale of two cities on behalf of one city against another, I must speak on behalf of all New Yorkers. One city, five boroughs in Thank opposition you very much. to this legislation. Council Member Kalos, your time is up. If you want to speak, you can go ahead in the next round. perverts the very meaning Kalos. of equity, offering a 5% waste cap to some while providing no waste cap for marine transfer stations Kalos. throughout the city. You can go in the next round. You can get more time, but you have to finish now. You cannot silence the truth. Please add me to the next <laughs> list of speakers. Introduction 495 perverts the very meaning of equity, offering a 5% waste cap for some while providing no waste cap for marine transfer stations throughout the city. Until waste transfer stations can be built in 12 additional council districts, where will the waste go? Funny you should ask. Section 16-495, subsection B, has a loophole hidden there. Uh, it says, quote, this section shall not preclude the commissioner from applying to increase the capacity of waste permitted by the State Department of Environmental Conservation at marine transfer stations operated by the department. So while other stations are having their capacity reduced, marine transfer stations will see an increase in the amount of waste dumped in their neighborhood when the commissioner is forced to apply for a capacity increase. We'd all like to see a city where no community is unfairly burdened with waste, but the real solution to this problem is not to spread around the waste, but to reduce the waste altogether. Waste equity through waste reduction. Rather than looking backwards by dumping waste destined for landfills in more than 20 residential neighborhoods, we must look forward to waste reduction and improving recycling from a dismal 15% to the national average of 35%. We can and must do better. Lastly, it has been my honor to represent the brothers and sisters of the Mason Tenders District Council as an attorney, protecting their members, contracts, pensions, and benefits. 
and once again, my pleasure to represent them in the City Council. Thank you for joining us here today in support of Local 108. If I may call upon you to please stand up. Please stand. Those that are here represent a small portion of the living wage job you seek to destroy. I call upon committee members and fellow council members to oppose this legislation in favor of legislation that would recycle and reduce harms to all communities. Uh, my last question is to Commissioner Garcia of whether or not introduction 495 would direct more waste to marine transfer stations. Thank so you. I, th I think that we do not know. We have a plan for how we are, are intending to move all of the agencies managed waste, but one of the, the things that I have testified to repeatedly is I don't know what all the implications are of this bill. In, in, in this chart, which you made, which I am very fond of, um, it, it, it has District 5 as one of the locations. Uh, quote, council districts with existing transfer stations that can accept increased waste pursuant to introduction 495. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you very much.